Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 15 in my Factorio Odyssey series. Now in the last episode, I designed some right-hand drive rail network pieces that I can put together in different orders, kind of like Lego pieces. And I constructed this first train grid here where I put in the mall. Now you may also notice there's been a couple of changes to the mall. I've just put in some better ratios here I took out the beacons on all of the machines that have the four speed modules because the inserters can't actually keep up when they are triple beaconed with speed modules inside of them. So the the beacons would just be wasting their effect and power. But I do have the beacons with all of the intermediate pieces over here that will be using the productivity modules because the productivity modules actually slow down the machines. So I need the beacons to speed them back up. And then there's also some beacons with the furnaces over here. So the mall will do all of the smelting it needs on site. I've got copper, iron, steel, and then stone bricks will be made over here in this corner. So what I want to get done in this episode, I want to conquer some iron and copper patches. That way I can get some trains to bring back some resources to the mall, and the mall can get going on all the things it needs to build. But first, I need to build another square or grid in the train system here. That way I can build a train depot where all of the trains can go park and be refueled. And then I've also taken the time to develop a logistics train network in vanilla. It's actually pretty simple now because train stations have a train limit you can set now. So you don't have all 50 bajillion of your trains going to one spot. So I'm just going to extend this out here to complete the next grid. So now that that is done, let me plan out the depot. I'm going to use this 4 to 2 lane offshoot here. I'm going to need as much space as possible, so I'm going to pull this back down to right before the curve here ends. And then there'll be a straight piece right here. So this has to connect into the turn. There we go. And the reason for all this is because I want the depot to be rotationally symmetrical. So there'll be like four quadrants to it. And for the quadrants to all fit together, the spacing has to be almost perfect. Okay, so if I work backwards here, this train is going to wait here with a chain signal. So that is the total length of the train. I want to bring this in to the very edge before turning. Because over here is where the next piece has to come out. And so this is actually still too close. So these rails won't interfere with each other, and I can put signaling on both sides, so that's enough space. Okay, so that gave me the space to start tiling this now, 
and I actually need quite a bit of space between each rail because I need some roboports to do all of the fuel restocking. So to just barely clip that chest there and then max distance, eh, actually right there looks good. So this is the main piece that tiles. And then there's some redundant power poles in here I don't need. So I'll get some more trains in here. And by themselves, these trains aren't really going to do anything. So I need to get kind of the perimeter of all of the railing mapped out here to see how large each depot is going to be. And then in the very center of this big square, I'm going to put the fuel production. So I'm going to copy all of this. And it will link in right here. Then the next side fits over here. And then the last one should slot in right here. So I have room for quite a few trades in this block here. And then in this center square, I found this blueprint here for rocket fuel online. So I'll leave a link to this. It's not my blueprint. And it will go right here. So this will keep all of the trains fueled up. The robots will pick it up from the output over here. And put it into all of the chests right next to the locomotives. Then there's a special station I like to put at every location other than the mall. Which I call the maintenance station. So all of these stations will be called... Depot 1. This will be the first quadrant of the depot. And this is where all of the iron trains will be. And then I can have copper trains over in this quadrant. Stone trains over here. And then coal trains over here. And I'm probably going to need stone the least. So I might split up the stone quadrant into stone and crude oil. Because now what I can do with the maintenance station, if I had this mall up and running, then I could load up the train, go to maintenance depot one, and I'll just do a certain condition. Because this is the train that I manually use anyway. Now I will set the requests on these requester chests here to be rocket fuel. And we'll deliver 50 to each chest. Now that I have a parking lot for the trains, I need a place where they can fill up on some items. So I'm going to take this train back to construction. And I want to grab these iron patches here. And then once I have a station that re can request, a depot station, and a station that can provide. I can show how to set up all of the circuitry for an LTN in vanilla. And LTN is the old logistics train network mod that basically turns your trains into robots and stations into provider and requester chests. Now that there's this enable train limit option here, it's super easy to get a vanilla version of LTN. So right here, it will branch off for the iron. So this station here, all of the iron consumers and producing stations should be named 
the same things respectively. So this will be iron ore plus, and then any consumer, like the mall iron ore over here, this one should be named iron ore minus. And this is just the system I use. You can name them whatever you want, as long as they're named the same thing. Now to get the spacing right, I'm going to put in a temporary train with a rail signal. So this could be the beginning of the stacker over here. And if you have enough uh, producing stations, then you don't actually need stackers. You can just set the limit on each station to just be like one or two trains. And then they'll wait in the depot instead. But because I only have the one for now, I'm going to put in a couple of stacks. And the number of stackers you need is n minus 1, n being the train limit you have here. Because the train here in the station counts. So if I, for example, set this train limit to 5, then I would only need 4 stacks over here because the fifth one is already at the station. So then at all of these spots, I'm gonna put a chain signal. And then over here, go the rail signals. So to load the trains, what I like to do is load them from both sides, because that's as fast as you can do it. But you do have to keep in mind if your iron um, or anything if the thing you're trying to load is limited by something else inside of the build, then the extra throughput capabilities that you're adding to the loading station aren't going to matter because it's still going to be bottlenecked by the other problem in the build. So this is all 16 lines. Let me try and compress this a little bit. That way it will work with this 16 lane balancer which I can't remember if I left a blueprint for or not. So I'll leave a link to this. This is a fantastic balancer because no matter where you plug in or pull off, it'll always have full throughput. And I should probably explain what this thing is doing here, why I don't just run a single belt across these inserters here. It's because the buffer chests here need to fill up evenly. So this is a one lane to six lane splitter because what we need to do in order to get everything to work properly, is connect all of these chests together and read off how many items are here. And if one chest has all of the items for the whole network, then the train can only ever pick up from that one chest, so it's going to really hinder the throughput. It's better to have those items spread across all of the inserters, so when a train pulls up, every inserter can work at the same time. So now all of the contents of these chests are being sent to this electric pole here. And what we want to do with that data is run it through an arithmetic combinator. And then onto the global network here. So it's going to take the, well, whatever's here. And it's going to divide it by the capacity of a train. And one of these trains can hold... 50, that's the stack size of iron, times 4, times 10, times 8 wagons. And so that comes out to 16,000. And it's going to output that onto the network. And then there's also going to be a red wire, and that is going to control this station here. So make sure send to train is enabled. The red wire is going to control... Um, one of the leave conditions on this train. Essentially, when a requesting station needs some iron, it'll show up on the red wire, which will then be sent to the train, which tells the train to leave. So the loop that this train will take is first, maintenance depot one, and its wait condition will be time passed, so it's going to wait at least 10 seconds, not 310, 10 seconds. That way it can fuel up. And then a circuit condition of 
iron ore greater than zero. And make sure that's and. So on the green wire, it's going to go... The, the green wire is going to take a signal to the depot, and that tells the train to leave using this condition. That's basically a providing station saying, hey, I have a train's load of iron you can come pick up from me. So it'll send a train to iron ore plus, where it will need a full cargo and a circuit condition. And this circuit condition is iron ore less than zero. So the requesting stations will show iron ore as a negative number. And that will come in on the red wire. Now, we don't want any trains coming to this station if there's no iron. So we're going to use a decider combinator here. And it's going to plug in to here if iron ore here is greater than 16,000. We're going to output a green signal. And this, we're going to enable and disable the station when a green signal is present. So right now, you'll see this station doesn't exist according to the train. And that's because there's not enough iron here for a train to come pick up any iron. So after it picks up its iron, it will go to iron ore minus. And this is a simple wait condition. All it has to do is empty its cargo and then go back to the depot. So let's send this train back. We don't need it anymore. I can get all of the mining drills down. So all of the lines are connected in. There's two that aren't used here, but that's just because the patches aren't big enough. So this station is getting loaded up. You can see on this line we have more than 16,000. So this should be outputting a green signal to this station, which enables it. Now over on this line, you can see that it's saying there's five on the green wire. And that's because this arithmetic combinator here is dividing the total amount by the size of the train, and it's outputting how many loads are available at this station. So we can see that there's five loads available, oh, six now, at this station. And then we need to send that data to the depot. But I'm gonna get a red and green wire here and use the blueprint to place them. I probably should have included this in the original right hand drive rail network book. I've never had to run a global network before because I've always just used LTN 
but that was because trying to get LTN to work in vanilla was super complicated before. Because you'd have to monitor how many... Well, actually, I don't need to pull the red wire off there. You'd have to monitor how many trains are going to each destination. So now we can pull from this power pole here, go into the station, and it will send that data to the train. So if we plug into here now, you see it's getting the correct circuit condition. It waited the 10 seconds, and now it's going to go pick up some iron because there's iron available at that other station. But I'm just going to put uh, this empty cargo inventory thing here. That way it gets stuck here because I don't want it going to iron ore minus yet. Uh, but I want to enable a train limit on all of these depots. Set them to one. And then copy that across all of these. I need this one to go back to the depot. I want to copy its schedule. Uh, but then I'd be copying that. Okay, hang on. <laughs> one last thing I need to do. I need to set up the requesting station. So right here, using an arithmetic combinator, need to grab some data from this RoboPort. And we're only monitoring the iron ore. So if we multiply iron ore by one and output iron ore, then we've isolated the iron ore data from this report. Otherwise, it's just going to send everything. And we don't want to know everything. We just want to know the iron ore. Then there's another combinator here. No, just kidding. This right here, this is where we set the request. So we're going to output a request of two train loads. And that will go into here. Okay, so we can see all of the inputs. There's wood, poles, lights, coal, and all that other stuff. But we're only outputting the iron ore. So we've isolated the iron ore signal. Then that needs to go into a combinator. Another arithmetic combinator. Where we take each and divide it by... 16,000. And we're going to output each. So now we see the input is negative 32,000 and the output is negative 2, saying we want two train loads here. And then there's one last thing. Take this signal, put it into this combinator here, and send it to this, where we enable and disable. So this will only be enabled if it's receiving a green signal greater than zero, or equal to one. And so here, see it's receiving a negative 32,000. So if anything here is less than zero, we will output a green signal. So that's saying if it's ever requesting something, or if the items here are ever less than the threshold, then we want to enable the station so that the trains out in the network can see the station. And we're gonna enable a train limit here of two max. Now I need some big power poles. So I gotta get this onto the main network over here. So from this arithmetic combinator to the pole, it's going to run down this way. Where it then connects into the global network. So on the global network, we should see we're requesting two train loads and there's 12 train loads available. Now here, I can remove this AND condition and it will take all of this iron ore over to the mall. It'll get dropped off. You can see some numbers changing here. The negative number on the iron is 
smaller now. This train is going back to the depot. I want to hurry up and copy its schedule and paste it onto the other trains before it leaves. So this one should go now. There it goes. And it's also going to Iron Ore Plus. Because this station is saying, I have a lot of train loads. Now this should turn off. Or this combinator should turn off this station once it sees that it has enough iron here. So it just went positive. And now this station disabled by control behavior. So we look at the map, it is red. So this is no longer visible to any trains trying to drop off iron ore. And if we look at the red signal on these power poles, it's no longer requesting anything because the demand has been satisfied. So this train will actually sit here until a request has been made on the red circuit and simultaneously a station that is causing the request will open up and this train will then path to it. So that's the basics of the train network I want to implement. If I find some quirks about it, I'll find some patches. Uh, but now I need to get the fuel going. So I think I can run the crude oil along here and just pull from this patch over here. So now all of the trains that were at the depot are trying to pick up all of these loads. But because there's no requesting stations, they're all kind of just backing up right now. So this exact same principle will work for all of the ores and for, well, any item actually. But since I'm gonna be doing all of my smelting on site, I don't need to worry about so many different items in the train network. So I think I will go out and grab this copper patch now. I just need to extend the train network here. So I have the next grid in place. I think to grab some copper from this patch, I'll have the trains come out uh, right here using this. So I want to try and reuse this blueprint. Maybe about here will work. And then this up here can be redone like this. And then this is actually something I should have done with the other station, but forgot. Like with the depot, I want to have a maintenance station. So this will be maintenance copper ore. And this station here is not iron ore plus, but rather copper ore plus. Now I need to make sure this is connected to the global network with the red and green wire. And now I'll go ahead and get the miners set up. Now instead of walking all the way back, I can tell this train to come to maintenance copper ore. And while I wait, I'll change the outputs on these to be copper and copper. Hop in and take it back to construction. So this will start to fill up. I have no copper trains at the moment. I should go finish off another quadrant of the depot here. So that is every quadrant now complete. I want to change the names so I can differentiate the quadrants. This will be quadrant two here, or maybe I should make it more like a graph. Yeah, so up here, the top right corner will be quadrant one, and then going counterclockwise, we'll have quadrant two over here. So this is depot two. These down here that used to be depot one will now be depot three. 
and quadrant four is the bottom right corner. So this will allow me to very easily control kind of the flow of my trains. And I don't need to use uh, separate quadrants for separate resources because the data comes in on the green wire and is sent to the train. It doesn't really matter what depot it's parked at. So I could set up a train right here, right now, that goes to that copper patch. Let me just connect the robo networks together. And when I am placing a bunch of robo ports, I need to be careful not to ever connect uh, separate grids together. So each uh, city block here will be its own robo port network. So it's important that the orange area here and here never touch. It's okay if the green area touches, but once the orange areas connect, then the robo port networks link together and it's one big one. It's better to have a bunch of separate networks and then have trains kind of bust the materials between everything rather than one conglomerate network. But anyway, back to this. We're going to go from depot one, add wait condition, time. It always waits at least 10 seconds. And it needs a circuit condition of copper ore greater than zero. Then it will go to copper ore plus. It needs a full cargo and a circuit condition of copper ore less than zero. Then it will go to, I guess I don't have that station up yet. Here, mall copper ore, train limit of two. It's going to be called copper ore minus. Now the only thing left to do is get this connected up to the global network. I need to string some red and green wire along here. Because right now this is saying I'm supplying 14 loads of copper ore, but that's not getting over to the depot. So it's connected up. That should... Yep, it sends this train out now to go grab some copper. So it will continue to wait here until I set up a requesting station right here, just like I did with the iron. So this is what I like to see. The mall is almost completely operational. I think I'll just bot over some coal from this patch because it's right here and not worry about a coal train. I do need to go out and get some stone though. So maybe this patch right here. But I think that's all the progress I can make in this episode. Let me quickly recap the LTN in vanilla setup here. So I have a quick addendum to the vanilla LTN. The problem doesn't present itself until you have multiple providing stations with a couple of requesting stations. So if I go back to how I was doing it before, where I enable and disable the requesting station when its request has been satisfied, then you can see some problems here where trains that are full bypass the stations and try to go back to the depot. And that's because of the way that they're all told here when they can leave by this uh, green signal here that represents a incoming request on the red wire here. So that's when uh, trains at the loading stations are told they can leave. Um, so this is just saying to these trains here, hey, you can go ahead and leave because something's requesting. But the problem is that these stations here, they have, well, they should have a limit of one. But if you hard set that, 
then you'll always eventually run into a problem where you have... Well, unless you're understaffed in trains, but you always want to be overstaffed. So this problem will always be present. Where they try and... Uh, b because these stations don't exist anymore... In the schedule, the train can't path to it, so it tries to go back to the depot even though it's full, and I don't want that. I want to stay at the station. The loading station. So instead of completely disabling the requesting station here, if instead you set the train limit using this to one or however many loads it can hold, then instead of trying to path around because the station no longer exists, the trains will wait back at the loader because this is set to a train limit of one. So the station still exists according to these trains over here. It's still there. And they're trying to path to it, but because it's full, they can't get to it. So they just wait over here in the loaders. And then any at the depots over here will follow the same principles that these do. Oh, don't get run over. Where they'll just wait until there's room at the loaders. So none of the wiring needs to be changed there. It's all at the requesting stations. So let me get rid of this. So now, uh, back over here, we can make the stacker obsolete by setting the train limit here to be 1. Or if you want to dynamically control how many trains are allocated, then what you can do here, instead of enabling this, set the train limit using this arithmetic combinator. going to output L, and its input will be whatever resource is stored here, divided by how much the train can hold. So this single providing station here is providing 14 loads to the network. And at this station, it can accept 14 trains. Now, you'd need a huge stacker for that. And in really big bases with a lot of trains, that might actually work out. And since I don't have enough trains to actually fill up this stacker here, I might just leave the uh, dynamic allocation. So the condition that sends the train away is still the same whenever it detects a station requesting iron ore on the red wire via a negative number then this train will leave. So now we need to change the requesting station here. So we still have the threshold here, what we're requesting. Then it isolates that signal. So the output here... Oh, I can't even see it. Uh, if we look at the input here, it's the same as the output from there. So input here, negative 10,000. Then we will divide that by how much can fit in a train, which is less than one, so it doesn't show up on this yet. But we need to take that signal that this outputs and run it into here as the train limit, rather than the enable disable. So the train limit here will be basically the same as this. We can run it through or just pull from this, run it into the station. And then this combinator here just acts as a diode like this one does over here. And as long as your threshold limit here isn't ginormous, you won't have a bunch of trains piling up. So if you look at the map here, this iron ore station has a train that's trying to path to it. It's this one. And once it receives its signal here to leave, it will try and fill up this station. Now, if there's another 
train like this one waiting at maybe another iron patch say over here and it's going to receive the signal at the same exact time but one of the trains i don't know if it's the closer one probably will path to it first and since the train limit here is well it will be just one when it's requesting has already filled up this train over here won't have a destination to go to, or its destination will be full. So it'll just wait at this station over here until another requesting station opens up. So the output here is now saying negative one. We see negative one coming across here, and the train limit, oh, is negative one. Okay, we need to, we do need to run that through a combinator. So we'll take each and multiply it by negative one, negative one, and output that back out as L. So now the train limit is one. So this train comes over, the next one comes up into here. It will try and go to iron or minus. But if we look, it says destination full. So even though it was told it could leave because the red wire hadn't updated yet because this other train was still en route to deliver here, it didn't have a place to go. So it's just going to wait here until an iron ore minus station has a train limit that isn't being satisfied. So let me change the copper. and the stone, and I don't have the coal set up yet. So there's no changes that need to be made to the depots. The only changes that needed to be made were mainly to the requesting stations, but a slight modification to the providing station with this switch on this combinator here. So this is how powerful this one little tweak of the train station can be. Uh, this train limit never existed back when I last played through Factorio. So this enables a completely vanilla version of LTN. So my plans for the next episode, I'm probably going to do the stone and coal off camera between episodes because I want to put another block out here and switch over to nuclear power. That way I can reposition my solar fields to be more in line with the grid that I'm setting up. And nuclear is just better in the mid game. You have way more power per area. But if you try and use nuclear all the way into the super late game, then you're going to lag a lot. So I will eventually have to switch back to solar. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.